So a few of you have asked me what's beyond integral. And integral has become this sort of guiding star for a lot of us in spiritual development where we recognize that there's a sequence of stages that unfolds and creates the foundation out of which we view and see the world. So to use a word or a term like amber, for example, that would come with it a sense of convention, of group coherence through shared beliefs, through a focus on uh, connecting communally and then barring out anybody that doesn't agree with us. When I say orange, that signifies a stage of self-independence and self being foregrounded into being the captain of its own soul, the master of its own fate, right? So from conventional to post-conventional, those, those things make sense. So this video is for people that already have sort of a, a grounding in developmental theory bit via say integral theory. But there's a lot more to the story than simply getting to this, what sometimes seems like a terminal point of integral. And it might be true that integral is a bright line of human development or an important juncture or a place of deep capacities of understanding the world and the cosmos that comes with it a level of integration, integrity, mastery, that is desirable. And so integrals great. And I think too much it's become It's become a signal for the peak of the thing that we aspire to rather than one stage or one rung on the ladder for us to put a foot on and climb beyond. So today I want to talk about what comes beyond integral, <laughs> what capacities come online how do we see? What do we become? And that's the topic of today's lecture. So to begin with, human beings develop through these successive stages, like ladder rungs. But it more has to do with growing and expanding outward into wider states of identity that become instantiated into the self so much that they become operating systems. You know, you have hardware, body, and then you have software. <laughs> you have your brain, you have your heart, your guts, and then there's the consciousness that's operating through it, right? So hardware, software. The stages are successive software programs <laughs> and as you grow you update <laughs> and I'm doing this this expanding bubble visual with my hands because it kind of is like that because you could say that as you expand and grow you're seeing more of the vibrant cosmos that we live in you're seeing more of reality you're seeing realms of existence that maybe somebody here doesn't see compared to somebody who's here. Which isn't to say that 
one or the other stage is better. It's just that as you grow up into these stages, there tends to be a kind of widening of awareness and then comes online a greater tolerance for a wider range of people and entities. This sense of being more deeply loving in a great in a greater fashion to more and more beings. So compassion is a really important element of stage growth. In integral theory and in communities that have oriented around integral, there's a focus on being able to juggle multiple competencies and take complex forms of thought and start to see conceptually the living fabric of the universe and start to order it in a healthy hierarchy so that you're no longer swimming in the miasmic openness of green. I hope you guys know what that means, but I'll, I'll include a, a diagram below the video. That way, if, if you're confused by any of this jargon, and it really is, like there's a lot of jargon, so, so bear with me. If you have any questions about it, feel free to email me or contact me through my website. But integral is sort of a foundational um, stage of increasing competence and increasing mental complexity that allows one to start to discern stages of reality, such as those I'm talking about right now. Personality types um, written within different human beings expressing in different ways with their own motivations. And quadrants. So the quadrants briefly are upper left, lower left, upper right, lower right. And basically that means that there are interior dimensions of the universe, like awareness, awareing. And then there are external dimensions of the universe, like this microphone, that laptop, this body that you see. And then there are personal levels of the universe, like me, mine, my own experience, and collective levels, like us, we, the communities we create, the business ventures that we set forth upon together. So, and then that there are lines of cognition through these, these stages of upward growth. So quadrants, levels, lines, types, that's integral in a nutshell. And it is a fascinating body of work. And anyone who hasn't gotten into it, I would highly suggest you sink your teeth into it. Because it's a truly fascinating corpus uh, that is just like a manual for a new operating system that can be totally mind blowing. When I got into Integral, I was 22, 23. And there was a sense that I was chewing into the words and slowly metabolizing them, but that there was a deeper psychoactive and somatoactive I think I just coined that word, I'm not sure, thing going on in my body and my mind. I've been known to make up words, so just bear with me. Feel free to correct my novel language making in the uh, comments section, which I probably won't read. Sorry. Integral comes with it a set of shadows as well, as well as being this bright line of development. And it truly is that like people at integral are brilliant at creating containers where one small tweak to their own self system or to the group in general can have a cascading effect out. 
And so they're incredibly powerful in life, in being able to create beautiful harmonies or disharmonies through their action and activity. So that's the gift and strength of integral when you're at that stage. And the shadow is that it's often overconfident in its own nature to perceive reality in a overly dry or conceptual way. And so it's kind of like being overly dependent on laws and commandments, <laughs> except like the evolved version. And this can come with it a, a great shadow of um, arrogance, which you want to be careful with. The next stage after integral, not so much. Integral has these aspirations of deeply knowing the most fundamental unity of reality. And we call that the alpha and omega or the thing which our universe is trending towards. Uh, construct aware, which is the next stage post integral, actually starts to deepen and dissolve into a sense of opacity. There's another weird word. Or transparency. Or diaphaneity. It's my friend Alexander's favorite word. And the self system that seemed so concrete and definite and masterful at integral begins to melt into a felt sense and a perception of a type of very, very subtle light or emptiness of form. And it's almost like the self that felt so stable. <laughs> Suddenly the rug is swept out from underneath it. And so for people who are entering this stage, it's almost like a, an annihilation of self. which ain't always comfortable. So from standing on the beautifully intricate, well-built foundation of integral, in my own experience, there's a sense of sinking, of gravity, of letting go into what is truly beyond that experientially. And this comes with, with it deep insights into the nature of reality because you're suddenly seeing beyond the constructs of the mind, the maps and models that seem so definite before. And instead there's a reaching out from your own deeper vantage point now. And of seeing the phenomenon of the causal light or the ultra subtle light. And this can take years to go through this stage because it's kind of a doozy and the best analogy I have for it that has gotten quite a few laughs from my friends in my circle is that it's like a cosmic banana peel just waiting to be slipped upon. <laughs> So from the confidence of integral, you kind of melt into <laughs> the schadenfreude of construct aware. <laughs> and this can be deeply humbling. And also with that goes the complex meaning making through linguistic channels straight out the window because no words can adequately describe exactly what you're experiencing and feeling at this stage. And so I'm not meaning to be cryptic at all. It's just that 
linguistic markers, words we use to describe experiential states, sometimes are inadequate to do so. And with that caveat, I'll try to do my best here. You're, you're dropping deeper into an experiential flux where you're seeing the conditioned habits of the mind playing out and mediating and filtering your reality in a way that makes it definite and real to you. And then when you see through that from this deeper place, there's this sense that thoughts just are continuously looping, going in a circle. And as you deepen into construct aware, there's a sense of wanting to melt everything that's not fully real and into the wider field of causal awareness that suddenly feels very pregnant and rich, albeit empty. And so this can be a kind of haunting emptiness where you're seeing through the self you thought you were and there's nothing there to console you. And people often, we don't have a lot of, of data on this uh, stage because it's super rare. It's like weird people get there for some reason that I don't understand. But what seems to be indicated in the research that we do have <laughs> and from anecdotal stories from people in the communities is that folks often want to clear their lives of everything that binds them to the relative self. <laughs> so like I slipped on the cosmic banana peel and then I broke up with my girlfriend and let go of my job and business and home and everything that I felt was getting in the way of the direct perception of the ultra subtle causal light that I felt pervading from everywhere and nowhere. <laughs> this stage is extremely destabilizing, but the promise is that it's clearing you out for a greater God to emerge. When I say God, I hope you know I'm obviously not talking about a mythic deity. I'm talking about the annihilation of any belief that gets in the way of a new energy and reality coming through you. The desolation of the self. Huh. <laughs> and it's clearing you out for experiencing yourself and the universe in a new way with the promise that there's an enlightenment current or a deeper wisdom and intelligence that can and eventually will pervade you and drastically and radically change you for the better. And we'll talk about that more at a different point when I go into the different stages beyond construct aware. The way this ties into the work that we do in my coaching practice is that tantric sexuality and tantra in general is a practice of the wind and warp of meeting your life as fully as possible in all of its complexities and richness and then driving your own witnessing awareness and cultivated spiritual energy into everything that you do. And that's my slogan, basically. Transmutation of sexual energy for manifesting dreams. There's this idea that if you consciously cultivate your own subtle energy and causal witnessing, 
and then do your due diligence to drive that into manifest form and with it all of its density and darkness and suffering sometimes that that creates a kind of vibration or a fuel for your own growth so the tantric path is not simply about ascending into enlightenment and then hanging out there like some Buddha or bliss bunny. Quite the opposite, in fact. Or not opposite, let's say. It is about transcending and awakening your energy in your mind and heart. But then it's about participating in life from a deeper seat of awareness and personal power that comes from cultivating energy and engaging with sex and <laughs> a drink with your friends and marriage and money and sitting in traffic all of those things become part of the path so instead of trying to get away from reality you're awakening and then driving that energy back into form. And the developmental stages, although the way we're defining it seems like a separate track from the enlightenment path of waking up, these two are not ultimately separate. So you have this idea of there being split paths or a dual path of awakening to the enlightened nature of what you already are in every moment. And then on the other hand, you have development with its latter rungs of growth that seem to happen through time in an invariant sequence. So they go from one to the next, to the next and you can't skip them whereas with enlightenment you can have sudden flashes of enlightenment like Japanese Kensho this idea of the flash of illumination or permanent enlightenment at whatever fucking age it happens to hit you like um, like certain Indian sages Ramana Maharshi is famous for having achieved enlightenment at a very young age. Becoming a vehicle for the enlightened energy or the state of enlightenment to move, move you. And how does this tie in with what I was saying before about Tantra? Because when you engage your own development fully, and commit to a path of waking up and growing up, which is something Integral talks about a lot, then your own path becomes a kind of super tantra. Because the way that you're walking requires of you that you've grown into capacities for viewing the world that automatically bump you into seeing in a deeper way. Remember the, the ever-expanding bubble of higher awareness? <laughs> and then deeply driving that into every function of your life so that it becomes not just an enlightened state, but a permanent stage where all the features and the, the hidden faculties of self are brought online into a new way. It's a very promising field. And it's like all the research suggests that the more developed you are, the more you're killing it at life. <laughs> you know, the better husband or wife you can be. Like the more tolerance you have to stay with discomfort and use it as fuel for awakening, for deeper compassion. It's human growth is a deeply good thing. And yet it takes a ton of bravery as well to be able to sit with the transformative fire of this super tantra 
basically, <laughs> is what I'm calling it. Without license, I don't think ever, anybody's ever used that term before. Oh, no, my friend Anand gave me that word. So I've got to credit him where credit is due. But it's super tantra in the sense that you're, you're weaving in all of the faculties of self that are now viewing and buzzing and riding at a higher frequency. And then bringing that to the rest of your life in every domain, in all of the quadrants, in integralities. So there's a potency and a power to spiritual growth that we're actually tracking through psychological research that's yielding a definite body of how people grow and then comparing notes with other practitioners and then creating a lifestyle for personal growth through sacred arts like sexual transmutation or meditation and so a new path emerges and I'd like to invite you into that journey. So if you're interested, please um, check out my website, trikacoaching.com or shoot me an email or a comment in the, um, the YouTube comments, which I've decided after all I will read. Sorry for my hesitancy. I'm just a little bit of a monk in some ways. But I promise to engage. And I'm inviting you into this path of super tantra and development and awakening and where I'm standing right now it is so worth the energy and effort put in so thank you for listening and uh, see you later <laughs>